What's up, geeks and gamers? It's Odin coming back with another video, and today we've got the box office breakdown for this, the weekend of October 11th to the 13th, and it is just another knock them out of the park weekend for Joker, which only had a 42.8% drop from week one to week two in the domestic market. For those that don't follow the box office, that is incredibly low for any film. Most films have at least a 50% drop. Some have even more than that. Joker, only a 42.8% drop from week one to week two. It is already getting close to $200 million here domestically. And when you see the worldwide totals, this movie is so much bigger than most people had probably thought it was going to be. To me, it looks like that Warner Brothers has a just gigantic juggernaut on its hands. I can definitely see why there's rumors going around that they're at least talking about a sequel, though in my opinion, I think the film would be fine just keeping it the way it is. And if you want to at least reference the story or reference the character and the universe or maybe even build a Batman movie that's set in the same universe, even if you don't have Joaquin Phoenix come back for the role, in all honesty, I think would be just amazing because of the fact of just how well this film has doing. Uh, the other films that came out this weekend that have not done nearly as well are films like The Addams Family and Gemini Man. <laughs> Gemini Man is, is a really sad tale. It's another Ang Lee film shot at, you know, an incredibly high frame rate, which most theaters are not going to be able to support, and also featuring a story that apparently was kicked around for about 20 years in Hollywood that no one wanted to touch, and if based on these numbers, it seems obvious as to why no studio wanted to touch it. Seeing that it was made for a budget of $138 million, this is yet going to be another 2019 bust and we've had plenty of bust in the year of 2019. Adam's Family though made $30.2 million which is okay for an animated feature that no one really asked for but I have a feeling that it's probably going to make up some of its money at least not being nearly as big of a flop as Gemini Man is. So let's go into those before we dive into the Joker numbers because holy crap, the Joker numbers are truly insane. So Gemini Man came in this weekend with a whopping $59.5 million. And as you all know, based on the fact that most films have that 50% drop or so, that means that the film will likely make 10 million, if not less than that next weekend, meaning that this film will get to the $100 million mark, maybe. Uh, we'll be lucky to get to the $200, $250 million mark, I would say, which means this film is going to be a flop because it needs to make back a certain amount of money. It only gets 6% of the worldwide box office total at the end of the day when you break in all the numbers. And yeah, it's not looking good for <laughs> Gemini Man. I thought that you would have a little bit better of a showing here because Will Smith is attached to it. Will Smith is still a pretty big name. You also have Mary Elizabeth Winstead and Clive Owen attached to it as well, who are actors that I personally like a lot. But it makes a lot of sense that Will Smith, yeah, he might have that name recognition, which is why he was able to get in even this much money, because if he was not attached to it, I imagine it would have made even less than that. However, it's not going to be enough. He is not a personality like The Rock. He's not a personality... Uh, like some of these bigger names, I would even put like a Kevin Hart who was able to take a movie just last year, earlier this year even, that no one really was praising, no one was giving anything to because it was a American remake of a film and it ended up making a lot more than people expected it to. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that Kevin Hart had a big draw, especially since the movie came out in the wake of the fact that he was basically bullied out of hosting the Oscars for really stupid reasons. And that's something probably a lot of people looked to and said, oh, let's go ahead and support this dude right here. Will Smith doesn't have the same thing. In fact, Will Smith has probably had a pretty poor year when you think about it, seeing that he was a part of that disastrous uh, look back of YouTube, the YouTube, <laughs> oh, the YouTube look back. And I'm forgetting the name of what they call it because it's one of the most downvoted videos in history because of just how stupid it is. And he was a part of that. So it doesn't surprise me, though, that he's not really had the same amount of pull at the box office that maybe he's had in the past. And at $138 million, this is a movie that's going to lose a crap ton of money. Adam's Family is a film that no one again asks for. I, I love the 90s, you know, the 90s versions of the Addams Family. In fact, just recently I picked up the double box, or not the double box set, but the double set of the Addams Family and Addams Family Values on Blu-ray because apparently Addams Family Values had never had a Blu-ray release until this edition. So this is actually currently still on sale for like 14 bucks on Amazon. I recommend it because both of these films are fantastic. And these are films that I will watch every Halloween or at least during the season of October because of how great they are. This just didn't really come across to me as being something worth seeing. The trailers were kind of just okay. They have a decent uh, voice acting cast of Oscar Isaac Charlize Theron, Chloe Grace Moretz, Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things fame. So they've got some names attached to it, but overall, it's just nothing really all that 
special, it seems, and nothing that I have any interest in. It seems very reminiscent of the old school cartoon, which some people might be more aware of and might be uh, more kind towards. However, it does, doesn't look like this is a film that's bringing in the audiences that it was expecting to with $30 million. I expect that in this type of animation, it probably costs between, what, 70 and $100 million or so. So it could make its money back at this point especially since it is a Halloween-themed film, and as the month goes on, it means that this film is likely to have more legs than other films like Gemini Man, which is not really an October-themed film um, on all accounts, and so it seems to me that Adam Stanley could potentially make some of its money back because of that. However, it's not going to be a giant juggernaut like some of the other animated films we've seen this year. But that gets us to Joker, which, in all honesty, it's truly amazing. A $55 million budget for this film, and this film has now, you see it, that is correct, it has now made $543 million. That is insane. That is absolutely insane how much money this has made in the last two weeks. It's only been out for two weeks, and it's already over the half-billion-dollar mark. Now, many people are asking the question, could this film reach a billion dollars? It is possible, right? It's a possibility. However, I would say it's not Likely, And the reason why, as I mentioned before, is because it does not have that China release. The China release is a good $200 million plus that it's not going to have in its foreign market total, which means you could see this film barely make the billion dollar mark. You could see this film get close to the billion dollar mark, but I wouldn't expect it to get any much more than that which is why I still think that this film will probably cap out between $750 and $850 million, could even get to the $900 million for all I know, with a lot of repeat viewings and a, and a continuing strong season, especially the fact that this is also a film that fits very well in the October season, a film that a lot of people, I think, would probably want to see close to Halloween because of just how disturbing it really is. It's, a, it's like a psychological disturbing type film, and it's done very well with, of course, that incredible performance from Joaquin Phoenix. But this is better than anyone, I think, was expecting this film to make. I'm sure there are some people out there that were predicting it would do pretty well. I don't think any of them would have predicted it did this well. I would have to say that the media buzz around this film and all of the crappy media stories that have come out about this film have definitely fueled a lot of people to see it, not just for people wanting to defend the film and support the film because of all the nonsense that's been said, but also because now people that otherwise probably would never have heard of this film or had any interest in the film know about it. I know that just, for just recently, my parents asked me about the film saying, hey, have you seen Joker? Is it any good? And these are people that, yeah, they, they go to movies every now and then, and I'm I'm sure they see trailers on television, but they don't really ever ask those types of questions for films like this. And this is a film that they're likely going to see. So you have an audience there, a 60 year old audience or so that have probably never heard of this film or have no knowledge of the character or have no real desire to see the character, at least in the numbers that the younger audiences, the, I would say the 20 to 45 degree or 20 to 45 uh, year range probably has a lot more interest in. So now you're reaching out to those older audiences too. And I think that's the reason why this film is doing so well because Joaquin Phoenix's performance is going to be able to reach out across all ages, all demographics in a way that is powerful, in a way that is moving. And it's really great to see this film happen. Yeah, do I still have that that kind of behind the scenes conspiracy theory because CNN is actually owned by Warner Media and is actually therefore in conjunction with Warner Brothers? And could there be some of these news stations that are owned by the giant corporation that owns Warner, the, the Turner, uh, you know, Time Warner Corporation, and could there be some connections there? There could be. I really have, have any evidence of that yet, except that they are owned by the same company, but it doesn't matter because the film is still great. Regardless of that's, if that, whether that's true or not, the film is still absolutely amazing. The film is getting everything that it deserves to have. So what does this actually mean hard numbers wise? So remember that most films tend to make around 60% of their entire box office haul within the first couple weeks. So it's now in week two of the film's release. So let's say that if this film it has a lot of legs, let's say this film makes even more money, which I doubt it will because by that I mean that it would be 50%. I don't think the film's going to make another $540 million, right? But let's assume that it was a 50% shake. Well, obviously, in order to get the final number, you would multiply it by two, and that would give you over a billion dollars. Something tells me that the film probably has made between 60 and 70% of its entire box office take, because I think that it's made a lot more of its money in the beginning than it will at the end. But of course, I think October could definitely help keep the legs alive on this film and keeping it at least the number one spot for possibly the next couple weeks or so. I don't really know exactly what's coming out. There really are no other giant films that I can think of off the top of my head that are coming out at least in the month of October that will probably be be able to, you know, destroy uh, the box office numbers for the Joker. And as I said before, this is a perfect October film for that to happen. In fact, let me go ahead and try and see if I can find what is coming out in the next few weeks. And so we have Maleficent Mistress of Evil, which is the sequel that no one asked for. It's a Disney film, so it probably will be number one in the box office next week. And you also have Zombieland 2 coming out as well. That film is, again, a sequel that's probably 10 years past due, which I'm sure will get some 
people going to see it because both of these films definitely have that October feel to them. No question about that. You also have Jojo Rabbit, which is coming out in limited release in only five theaters. That's that's hilariously bad. October 25th, you have pretty much nothing really that I've heard of or had any interest in coming out in that way. Arctic Dogs comes out on November 1st, including uh, Harriet and Terminator Dark Fate, which is going to be a giant bomb. So I think that there's a chance that you'll see Joker within at least the top three next weekend. There's a chance that Zombieland 2, Mistress of Evil, since they'll be in their opening weekend, will probably have more than the Joker. If the Joker has another 50% drop, you're looking at another $25 million or so domestically next weekend, which I think is definitely possible and definitely uh, something that it could do by next weekend. However, it is interesting to see how those numbers are going to shake out. The point is this. If this is 60% of its entire box office take. If the $500 million that it's made so far is 60% of its box office take, you're looking at a film that could probably get very close to the $900 million mark by the end of its run. And that's going to be because of a very, 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 very strong opening weekend here in the United States. And as you can see right now, apparently it's going through an update. I always hate clicking away from these things because when you're very close to the 11 p.m. Eastern time mark, that is when they tend to update the box office. And so it looks like I am not going to be able to go back and check it out. However, as you saw, it was around $543 million worldwide which is absolutely insane. It's amazing. It's fantastic to see $200 million or so in the domestic worldwide and about $350 million in the foreign market. That's a film number. That's a number that's going to probably rise in the next several weeks. It's a film that could definitely be driven by the American and also by the foreign markets that is open in, even without China, getting at least very close to the billion dollar mark. And if Joker does cross the billion dollar mark, I will be the first one to celebrate that because I think it deserves it. We have very, very crappy films that are at the top of the list this year of the highest grossing films. Almost all of them are owned by Disney. It'd be really great to see a non-Disney film that's actually a good movie, that is legitimately, objectively a good movie, crack into that top five and even knock out some of those Disney crap films that are in the top five list of the year. But anyway, that's it for all. Uh, that's all I have today. So what are your thoughts about this? How much do you think Joker's going to make? Do you think Joker could still reach the billion dollar mark even without China? As I said before, I think that's a giant number and a giant audience that it's not going to have to support the film. What are your thoughts on that? And also, do you think that the Joker could potentially crack into that top five. Again, all top five movies this year are almost all owned by Disney. The one exception is Sony, but of course it's Spider-Man, so it's still connected to the Disney MCU universe, right? And so I still would count that in the Disney line of things. But could this film knock one of those other films out? It's going to be very hard to do because all those films are well over a billion dollars at this point. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And it would be really great to see a great film like Joker knock out films like Aladdin, which had no reason to reach the billion dollar mark, or Toy Story 4, which had no reason to reach the billion dollar mark, or even worse, The Lion King, which had no reason to reach the $1.5 million mark. Now, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get that high because Lion King, of course, had a much wider appeal. Of course, got the China release because you know, China and Disney team <laughs> seem to play pretty well together overall. I think that you had a really great episode of South Park recently that basically called out Disney for playing ball and for playing game with China and trying to appeal to them and appease to them because of those things. So huge shout out to South Park and to, uh, uh, to Trey Parker and Matt Stone for doing that because it's something that needs to be done. I really do think that we need to look into the books a little bit more because I think there's something going on behind the scenes. But enough of my conspiracies. Joker's doing great. What are your thoughts about it? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, smash the like button, give us a subscribe. It helps us all a lot. Also, go check me out over on the Odin's Movie Blog channel where we'll continue the conversation about Joker, the box office, maybe do a little bit more of a breakdown, trying to do some maths. Everyone knows that. Everyone loves when I do the math because math is just the greatest thing ever. But anyway, you guys are awesome. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.